Colin here from Colin's Beauty Pages and here's a challenge. Can I do an interesting video about a very basic raw material? Glycerol stearate is one of the names that you will see cropping up on ingredient lists pretty often, especially for creams. I always call it glycerol monosterate, which is its chemical name, but its official name as it appears on the ingredient lists is glycerol stearate. What is it? Well, a couple of things it isn't. First, it isn't controversial. I don't recall anyone claiming it's dangerous, which is nice. Another thing it isn't is synthetic. It can be derived from most vegetable oils easily enough. Most oils are mainly triglycerides. A triglyceride has a glycerin backbone with three fatty chains attached to it. You take a couple of the fatty chains off of a triglyceride oil and there you have it. So glycerol monosterate is a glycerin backbone bone with just one fatty chain attached. If someone came up with it today, it would no doubt be hailed as a fine example of green technology. You make it simply by hydrolyzing a suitable oil feedstock. This is a process about as complex as making soap, which some people do in their kitchens without too much trouble. It uses renewable resources and is not energy intensive, and the product itself is not toxic and is readily biodegradable. In fact, it can be degraded not only by microorganisms but by humans. The process of breaking down a triglyceride into its component parts is a very basic one that is one of the body's major sources of energy and is going on inside you right now. If you put a product containing glycerol monosterate onto your skin I doubt that very much would get through to your bloodstream but if it did the body would know exactly what to do with it once it got there. Cleaving the fatty chains off the glycerol gives us a cheap but really useful ingredient. The glycerin bit is water soluble and the fat chain is oil soluble, giving you a molecule that can stabilise emulsions. I said that the production process was similar to soap making. For the most popular form of glycerol monosterate, it actually involves a bit of soap making. By putting a splash of sodium and or potassium hydroxide into the mix, a small amount of soap is formed. For uh, fellow chemists and the many soap makers out there, the soap is formed by neutralising leftover stearic acid. I find this really neat. This is handy because the glycerol monosterate isn't that good as an emulsifier on its own. The soap enhances it considerably. It makes it into the grade known as glycerol stearate self-emulsifying and you will often see glycerol stearate SE on an ingredient list, particularly in skin creams. This means that there's a trace of soap in there as well. So there you have it, a cheap, safe and very useful material one whose name you will certainly see if you look out for it. There's a great deal more I could have said about this stuff, but I've probably already exhausted your patience. So thanks for listening and please sign up for my newsletter if you'd like more of this sort of thing. Thanks very much.